Good morning guys, it's Jonathan and Bob CNC. Welcome back to Getting Started. Today we're going to be going over how to make toolpaths and we're going to delve into some of the specifics of actually setting up the parameters for the specific bit that we're going to be using. So I have me a sign that I've made here and what I'm wanting to do is I'm going to cut out the sign but I want to carve out all of this area right here. So I want to leave this lettering to where it's raised up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, I'm going to grab my lettering and I'm going to grab that inside rectangle there and I want to add an operation. Now I want to use a pocket operation that will remove all the material inside of those vectors and then I'm going to choose what bit I want to use. Now you can type in the diameter of the size bit you want but you can also select the different sizes you have. You have your sixteenth, eighth inch, uh, quarter inch and then it'll have default parameters set for all of those bits. So I have my bit diameter. The next thing we'll talk about is step over. Now imagine you cut a line straight into your wood and then you want to step that bit over and come back to remove that material. So the step over percentage is the percentage of the bit that you're moving over to take out that material. Um, so again, if I have a, an eighth inch bit and I want to move over 50%, then it's going to move over 50% of that diameter. So it would move over a sixteenth of an inch and then come back to remove that material. For most of your roughing passes, um, you usually want to use about 30 to 40% step over. But if you really want to get a nice um, clean finish to go back and make like a finish pass, then you'd want to use something like 10 or 15%. So next we're going to have our Z-Safe height. Now this is the height that you're going to retract to when your machine is pulling the bit out of the wood and moving it over to a new location to cut. So let's say we set our zero point at the surface of our wood. So anything we carve is going to be negative below that zero point into the wood. So our Z-safe height would then be positive off of that zero. So it's going to come up above the wood, um, in this case, half an inch, and then move over to the next location and start cutting. This would be really important, like say, if you have clamps holding down your workpiece that you don't want to hit, then you want to make sure your Z-safe height is high enough so that you can get past those clamps without hitting them. Next thing we have is you have your cut depth final and your cut depth per pass. Your cut depth final, that is the final depth to which you want to cut. So in this case it's 0.1, but let's say you want to cut all the way through a piece. Well, you don't want to take all that material out in one pass because that would be too much for the bit. So you want to say, okay, I want to go to this depth, but I want you to take this much each time you go around. So you can divide up that into the, the depth that you need to be taking, depending on what bit you're using and what your cutting parameters are. Next, you have our feed rate. This is our X and Y feed rate, and then you have your plunge feed rate. Your X and Y, it's gonna be how fast it moves uh, back and forth. And then your plunge feed rate is gonna be how fast it actually plunges down into the material. Usually you want your plunge rate to be about half of what your regular feed rate is. So we have all these parameters. Now all of these kind of tie in together. The, um, like your, your feed rate, another thing that's not shown here because the router that we use on, the, our, on our machines is a uh, Makita router, it's a standalone, it has fixed variable speed. But um, it, you, the faster your bit is spinning around, the faster you can send your feed rate usually. They're tied together. So if you can only spin your router so fast, you can only make that bit go around uh, so fast, then you can only send your feed rate up so fast. Um, the goal is to where, if you're, say your bit is rotating, and each time it rotates, you have that flute that's sticking out and it's wanting to carve out a certain amount of material as it goes around. What you want is to where your feed rate is set so that you're feeding that bit into the material just as fast as that bit is rotating and taking material out. Because if you force too much into it and it's not cutting out enough, then you could break your bit or it's going to start uh, heating up or you know, if you're not taking out enough, that can cause other problems. So it's really, there's, a, there's calculators out there that will kind of get you in a, in a good sweet spot, but you, there are all the different factors kind of tie in together. You know, you don't want to take out too much per pass. You don't want to take out, um, have your step over too much. You don't want to be going too slow or too fast. So you, you kind of want to use, find that optimal zone and it'll depend on what material you're cutting or what bit you're using. Um, so we have those parameters there. Um, you do have some advanced settings here. You have your cut direction. This is basically just the direction um, in reference to the bit, the, the um, direction that the bit is turning um, and what direction then the machine is going to feed the material into that bit. 
you have your geometry merge function. Um, this will then it will basically automatically merge vectors. You have your plunge ramp in. Now what this does is instead of plunging straight down into the material and then moving across, it ramps down to your final depth. So you're not just like plunging again straight down and then taking the full width of that as you're as you're speeding up to your final feed rate. It's kind of ramping down and gradually getting deeper as it's speeding up. Um, the last thing we have here is you have your cut depth start. Um, this is going to come in really handy. So let's say, okay, we have our zero point again. It's on the surface of our workpiece, and then we cut a pocket into that. So we remove, say, 0.1 inches of material. So we have this pocket in our wood. But then say we want to cut lettering down into the bottom of that pocket. Well, we want our lettering to be so deep, but we don't have to do the math to add whatever our pocket is from the zero point plus that lettering and then go down that far. What we can say is, oh, we want our lettering to be this deep, but we want you to start at this depth. So it'll start at that depth and then cut your lettering from there. So for what we're doing now, I'm just going to set that at zero. I don't really need that. I'm going to hit apply and preview. And then it is going to calculate the G code. This is the, the file made up of X, Y coordinates and some, some speeds that it's going to actually send to the machine. It's going to calculate that and then we're going to generate it. And then it will generate the file and then we can then later send on. So the last thing I want to do is, okay, now that I have my, my lettering and all this other stuff, is I want to actually cut the outside parameter of this into um, out, of, out of a bigger piece of wood. So I need to, first off, grab that. I'll deselect these. And now I want to add another operation. I want to create a new operation. And then I want it to, you have, you have three options here. You have a vector, uh, no offset, a vector path inside, and a path outside. So the no offset means that it's going to cut straight on that line. So if you have an eighth inch bit, and it's cutting straight on the line, it's going to take out a sixteenth inch on one side and a sixteenth inch on the other. The inside or outside is basically it's taking into, into account the diameter of the bit you're using and doing it so that the outside edge of that bit is going to ride right on the line, whether it's on the inside of the line or on the outside of the line. That way you don't, you, you can, you get the, the precision of where that line is, no matter what, you know, what diameter your bit is. So because I'm cutting out a part, I want it to be the precise amount, uh, the precise dimensions on the outside, so I want to use path outside. Again, I'm using the same parameters here. Um, I'm using an eighth inch bit, but instead of this, I want to say go 0 0.5 inches because I'm going to be cutting it out of a roughly half inch piece of material. After cutting it out all of the way, you usually want to go down maybe 10 to 20 thousandths deeper than what you're actually cutting out to make sure that, that you get through. You might use a, like a piece of scrap wood or, or something underneath it to where you don't you know, damage your spool board if you don't want to. I'm going to hit apply and preview. And now it's going to carve this and I want to generate that G code. So now that I have these two files, now we can do two things. We can either save them. We have this option here. We'll save that G code. Um, if you're on the online version, it will save it to your downloads folder. So you have to take it from there and then move it to the folder you want it to be in. But you can then take that and send it to like UGS or something like that to actually send to the machine. Or if you have our basic sender downloaded, you can transfer it straight to the sender and it'll open up that sender and open it from there. So that's about all we had for today um, as far as you know, what speeds and feeds to use. Again, that's really going to kind of depend on, you need to know the, the material you're using, the kind of bit, the diameter, all that kind of stuff. And there's lots of calculators out there. Um, Bob programmed one that is uh, really, really handy um, to try. And you're, you'll have to experiment a little bit to kind of find that optimal zone where your bit is going to be cutting correctly and you're not going to be dulling it and you get a, a nice finish. So that's all I had for today. Until the next video, I will see you guys later.